And now it's time to have some fun with some more tips and tricks. And these are sponsored by Fidipides. And let me say a couple of words about Fidipides. I travel the country constantly and go into dozens of running stores every year. I have not found any staff that's more knowledgeable nor as passionate about matching up the customer with the right shoes. So any questions on shoes, see the Fidipides folks. Ansley Mall and Sandy Springs in Atlanta. Our first trick that we're going to play on the subconscious brain is about the lulls that one often has in hard workouts or long workouts or races. Uh, almost everybody gets them and the way that this comes about is you're uh, allowing the subconscious brain to conduct most of your running activities as it monitors stress and the stress level goes up because of exertion, weather, whatever the subconscious brain starts secreting anxiety and negative attitude hormones, making you feel less like going on. What you have to do is shift the brain control center by having a mantra or having a thought. Uh, a simple fix is a mantra such as, stop doing that subconscious brain. And then you have shifted gear into the conscious brain. From that point on, have a positive thought. I can do this. One more step. I'm getting the job done and you can stay in the conscious brain and stop the production of those negative hormones and those anxiety hormones. The next tip is all about a negative split. Most folks have heard about a negative split, but a lot of folks have not. This is very simple. It means that the best way to run a race is to have the second half be faster than the first half. Now this means that the first half needs to start conservatively enough so that you have saved resources and then can use them during the second half. So the idea is to use a good magic mile computation or some other way to assess what a realistic pace would be. You can go to jeffgalloway.com or almost all of my books and find out how the magic mile works to very accurately predict what you're currently capable of doing. Uh, it's always better to hedge your bet and to build in a negative split by adding 15 to 30 seconds per mile slower for a 5K or a 10K race during the first mile or two. And in a longer race, such as the half marathon or marathon, build in a uh, 20 to 40 second per mile slowdown during the first few miles. This allows the body to warm up so that then it can really start cranking without huffing and puffing. Our next trick or tip is the cadence drill. The cadence drill is amazing in how it will make you run smoother, more efficiently, and actually speed you up. It's a very simple drill. It's inserted during a short run on a Tuesday or a Thursday after you've done some gentle warm up. Time yourself for 30 seconds. And the Galloway timer is clearly the best way to do this because it will beep and then you can start counting. You don't have to look at your watch. So you count how many times your foot touches, either your left or your right foot. Don't try to count both because it'll drive you crazy. And then uh, take a 30 second break in between, uh, do another count, and your mission is to add one more count to each successive one. Do at least four of these in a row, uh, as many as eight, and then if you do it once a week, by the end of three to six months, you're gonna find that you are faster, more efficient and smoother. Research shows that the way distance runners improve their performance and their efficiency is by having more steps per minute and this drill will help you do that. 